Përshëndetje që kuest e emisionit Startup, së onë të kemi zjedhur të flasim për zhvillimin ekonomik të vendit ton për 15 vjetë shtetë, sa kemi arritur të zhvillohemi ekonomikisht, në qka kemi ngecur dhe si duhet vazhduar tutje, flasim së onë të për Startup, Masimiliano Paluqi, menageri Bankis Botrore për Kosovë dhe Alessandro Biancardi, zëvënd drejtuës i bashkimit evropian në Kosovë. Në vazhdim do të cilim disa nga njarit kryesore të ekonomisë që u shënuan gjatë kësa jave në vendin ton. Ministria Finansave Punës dhe Transfereve njëfton se me 24 shkur 2023 do të mba e tanë kandi i parë për vitin 2023. Në këta anë kandë do të metohen obligacione me maturitet 5 vjeqar në shumën për 25 milion euro. Qeveria Kosovës përkatsish Ministria Finansave Punës dhe Transfereve për të tretën herradhez i pëmbështet financiarisht organizatat jo qeveritare që ofrojnë shërbimet e kuzhinave popullore. Kjo aktivitet realizohet në kuadrë të masës 3.4 të pako si rinjallës ekonomike dhe parashem bështetjen e nëndë mdjetë organizatave humanitare me 1.2 milion euro të cila do të ofrojnë shujta falas për familjet me në nevoj. Ministrja e Industrisë në dërmarsis dhe inovacionit Rozeta Hajdari prezentoj strategjin komtare të zhvillimit 2030. Draft strategia për zhvillimin industrial dhe mbështetje në bizneseve 2030 u diskutua në një të rjezë të organizua nga këshili investitorve evropian me përfacuës nga antarët e këshilit e investitorve. Komisioni Evropian, Ambasada dhe Akademia si një nga sesionet e konsultimeve politike gjithë të përfshirë se për këtë strategi. Masimiliano Paulu, që menageri Bankes Botrore për Kosovë, tha se ekonomia e Kosovës për këto 15 vjetë ka avansuar mjafë, por ka shumë qka që mund të bëhet ende që vandit e ari një nivel tjetër zhvillimi, nivel tjetër të të hyrave. Menageri Bankes Botrore, Paulu, që ndër të tjera folje dhe për rritje në eksporteve që ka shenuar Kosova që nga pandemia për zhvillimin e fushes e teknologjis, për zhvillimin e sektorit privat dhe për investimet e huaja. Kosovo is right now at a crossroad. It has advanced quite, quite a lot, but uh, a lot can still be done to take the country to, uh, an, to a different level of development, to a different level of um, income. Let me be more specific. Kosovo uh, started its journey uh, in the 90s, and especially after, after independence, to turn the economy into an economy that is more aligned, let's say, with the standards of other European countries. It's a country that has been growing traditionally at 3% to 4%, which if you take some uh, growth rates of other countries in the European Union, can seem like uh, a decent growth rate. But Kosovo is the youngest country in, uh, in Europe, also in terms of demographics, which means that 3% to 4% is not enough. And actually, our estimates tell us that uh, Kosovo's mm, income per capita right now is 12% of uh, the average in the European countries. And at this stage, it will take decades. And when we say this, we compare Kosovo to, for example, some of its peers um, in uh, Europe in terms of, of the size of the country, it would take three decades to get to the same level of per capita income. So a lot has been done. If you look at uh, income per capita, there's been quite a lot of a remarkable increase. Uh, the GDP in absolute terms has tripled since, um, since independence. So there is a lot that, that happened, but more needs to happen. And when I say this, uh, I basically refer to making the economy more competitive. What does that mean? It means basically creating more jobs, more high value jobs, jobs that uh, are basically delivering to the people, but they're also delivering to the economy. And these better and uh, better level jobs are basically those jobs that are more productive, that um, create value. 
the structure of the economy has traditionally remained a structure based on two things. One, remittances that have basically funded the constructions, mostly constructions and, and uh, demand. Then we see uh, public sector demand. And, uh, and then lately we see a shift in the economic pattern of the country fueled by exports. But let me focus on the first two first. Um, an economy that is based on demand is an economy that, yes, delivers, but up to a certain point. If you take into consideration the fact that in this country, when you look at public demand, capital investments have remained subdued uh, for a long time, then the potential of growth of the country only gets to a certain point. Now, export is the interesting news about this country. Uh, Kosovo, especially after and during the pandemic and after the pandemic has seen its export increase, especially towards those non-traditional markets for Kosovo, those that are farther away, not just in the region, but Europe, I mean Europe and North America. This is an important development for the country that needs to be sustained. But for, for exports to be sustained, for Kosovo to be competitive, it needs to continue innovate, it needs to continue reform to and what that means is basically to uh, provide, to improve the quality of capital, human capital in the country, to allow the private sector to actually operate and create more jobs. Um, and that means also that can be disaggregated in, uh, in many ways. That means basically creating um, the conditions for the private sector to operate in a, in a less constrained environment. It means guaranteeing uh, security of energy supply. It means also helping uh, those companies that are right now at mm, small and medium to become actually bigger to be able to compete and innovate, which means, which speaks to access to finance, to many other variables. So in a nutshell, the economy of Kosovo has grown over time. Uh, it has changed. But right now, it is the time for Kosovo to get to the next level. And the next level means creating more higher value jobs. Cila mendoni që ka qenë përjudha më vështirë ekonomike vendit ton? Clearly, uh, Kosovo is, um, is a country that emerged from a conflict. And uh, uh, the time of the post-conflict period is usually uh, a vibrant period because the, the starting point is, uh, is very low, uh, but at the same time is also a complex uh, period because the economic structure needs to, be, um, needs to be put in place. The country needs to, in this particular case, Kosovo needed to build its own institutions, its own, um, its own network, its own infrastructure, etc. So there was a vibrant but also difficult time which Kosovo managed to uh, go through thanks to the support of the international community and thanks to the ter determination of the Kosovo's people. So that is one thing. But of course, um, we also look at, if you look at the recent history of Kosovo, Kosovo also uh, faced, as other countries, the impact of the financial crisis in the mid-2000s uh, and COVID was definitely a very difficult country, a difficult um, situation for, for the country. It was a very difficult period, but that the country managed to weather and um, to actually uh, go to uh, a next level of development. E përmande që pandemia ka qenë një përju dhe vështir për vandin ton, si më ndoni që ka qenë gjinshmëria shtetit për të të ikaluar këtë situatë? COVID-19 was a shock for every economy in the world. So, and, um, and the difference in uh, managing the pandemic was made uh, by basically adopting those policies that would, on the one hand, keep people alive, and on the other hand, keep their, their sources of livelihood coming. What I mean here is that uh, ev if you look at uh, the situation of pretty much every single country, what the public policies were focused on were basically on keeping, um, on making sure that people uh, did not fall sick uh, and uh, to provide them with the, with the vaccines to actually uh, not fall 
um, prey of this, uh, of this um, pandemic, and at the same time to guarantee a source of income while they, they were uh, not able to, to work. The authorities in Kosovo adopted this uh, adopted public policies based on these two principles. And they provided support to people and firms to face the consequences, the immediate consequences of the pandemic. They could do so because the country had accumulated some reserves, some fiscal reserves, some buffers in the budget that allowed the authorities to respond promptly by providing support to people and firms. This was actually what helped um, the Kosovo society to weather the, con the, the impact of, of the pandemic. Of course, the shock was so big that the uh, decrease in the per capita income was noticeable. But it happened in Kosovo, it happened in every single country that was, that was hit by the pandemic. But, that, uh, but it, if there is one lesson to draw from, from the pandemic is exactly this. Countries, there are two lessons. The first one is that countries need to have enough uh, buffers in their budget to be able to face the consequences of crisis when they come, and they come unannounced and uh, in, such a, in such a magnitude. The second thing, if you look at the specifics of the health crisis, um, COVID-19 exposed the need to strengthen primary health care. While every single country went through uh, a very difficult crisis, those countries that were able to um, manage the crisis better than others had stronger primary health care systems. Therefore, looking forward and in anticipation of other crises which we cannot expose, the message is strengthen your buffers in the budget, strengthen your primary health care system. E te i kalun pandemin, kishim edhe një situatë dytë të vështirë ekonomike, inflacione. Sa me ndoni që u menagju nga vetë shteti dhe qeveria jon, në vendosjen e strategjis për shmimet taban. Në një trek të lirë, si që jemi nën me ceftan, në një shtetë demokratik, ale jo të një gjëtje. Once the, the COVID crisis was over, we thought that uh, the, the, every single economy in the world thought that they were out of the tunnel. But as you mentioned, then first the commodity price crisis and then the uh, consequences of Russian aggressions uh, of Ukraine uh, materialized. And every single country, particularly those that are, uh, that are dependent on imports of fuel, and food uh, were, were those that were mostly exposed by the increase in prices. Kosovo was no uh, exception to that. Um, Kosovo imports uh, food, um, but also imports energy, especially when the two power plants that uh, provide um, energy to electricity to the, uh, to the country are not functioning properly. So indeed, that uh, um, created a situation where the authorities had to intervene to protect the most vulnerable. And in that context, they also, um, as you mentioned, they uh, passed the, um, some measures to, to contain prices by fixing ceilings to these prices of certain commodities. Now, um, this is a measure that several countries in, in the world adopted it's not necessarily the most, uh, let's say, efficient and effective measure to contain prices, uh, because while that may uh, appe that, that they may set a limit to to prices and speculation at a certain point, but it actually distorts the market. So, in a context where the shock. Uh, is there but uh, needs to be managed, the most appropriate way to manage this shock is not necessarily by uh, extending these price caps over time. So the message here is that when there are some uh, shocks like the one that the country has faced, uh, the country, indeed the authorities, need to play, to play a proactive role and that proactive role is, consists basically in supporting the most vulnerable. And in deciding which measures to adopt to support the most vulnerable, 
the criteria should be that of not further distorting the market. Me qenë se bo flasim për inflacionin, si pas bankës botrore, për sa ko parashihet jetë kjo ose apritet e ketë rami e të inflacionit? It is, whenever we talk about pro prospects and projections, it, it is always very difficult to provide an estimate, to, to provide an end date to uh, what is happening right now, because um, it's, it very much depends on the evolution of a lot of variables that are in, oftentimes beyond the control of uh, the countries. And this is the case of the ongoing crisis. We, we can see some signs of uh, prices easing, especially in commodities and uh, en energy. But um, that, that's something that will have to be tested. Uh, the assumption that this is actually leading to a decrease in, the, in, the, in inflation uh, is going, will need to be tested in a few months down the road. So uh, unfortunately, I don't have a firm answer to say by then we will have uh, inflation actually receding. We are seeing some signs, but it very much depends on the evolution of uh, Russian aggression to Ukraine and also and the impact on, uh, on the surrounding countries and the global economy as a whole, but also on whether or not there will be uh, additional shocks to the system that at this stage we cannot anticipate. In all circumstances, we see that there's a sign of easing, but uh, how long, how, how sustained this is and how long that will uh, last, we don't know at this stage. So while it is difficult to anticipate when inflation uh, will actually recede, um, the calculations and the, the methods that we use to uh, determine the level of inflation over time show that after a peak um, that was reached in, uh, towards the summer, then we see that from the beginning of the year towards, um, as, as we move through 2023, there would be a decrease of uh, the, the pressure on prices, although we will not get into negative territory, meaning there will still be some inflation, there will still be some, some pressure, but um, how big this pressure would be would also depend on the impact of external factors that at this stage are difficult to anticipate. Nëse mund flasim pak për zhvillimin e sektorit privat, pys për këto 15 vjet shtet, si është gjindur sektori privat në zhvillimin e ti në këto periuda të ndryshme? If you look at the structure of the economy of Kosovo, you look at a country that uh, is mostly relying on uh, mid, micro, medium, and small enterprises. So this is a reality uh, that is characterized by many firms that appear on the market um, that actually remain on a level of development and don't jump to the next level, which would allow them to be more competitive, would allow them to be actually more productive. It is also true that it's very difficult in, uh, to get a clear sense of how many firms that were created are actually still surviving because a lot of the information about this data, uh, about these companies is missing. Mm, companies register but do not deregister. But presuming that all, most of these companies that registered are still uh, operating, we see that they still continue to remain small in, um, in size and therefore uh, not necessarily innovating, not necessarily uh, expanding their production. So there, uh, what we would like to, to um, suggest is that more is done to actually provide the conditions, create the conditions for these companies to uh, create and innovate and uh, be more productive. One, there are many elements to this, uh, to this recommendation. Uh, I'm packing them briefly. One of them is investing in people, investing in human capital, uh, meaning having the right people to work and to, to be actually active agent of, uh, of economic uh, production, and therefore investing in education is key. 
Uh, the second point is allowing um, companies to actually access resources provided uh, that are available in the banking system. So we see that a lot of companies, especially small, the startups, uh, have problems accessing finances from the banking sector. Um, they most likely, and some, oftentimes they don't have the requirements, they don't meet the requirements. The question is, is there a way to, um, to revise these requirements so that these companies can be supported? So there are issues related to red tape and uh, how to incentivize, how to address these issues in order to have uh, these companies operate in a, in, a, in a more agile environment. So there are issues of reforms, there are issues of also attitudes uh, of these companies to think big and think that actually Kosovo is situated at the crossroads of uh, many uh, commercial routes and many global and regional value chains. Kosovo actually can take advantage of this situation and, uh, and the companies in Kosovo can actually benefit from this, but they need to dare. They need to also be put in a situation to dare. And some of them have started doing, doing so over uh, the pandemic. And, and that's why we see an increase of and diversification of exports of this country that more and more look to other um, markets outside of the region and outside of the continent. Parmanda të dhe ju, realisht vande yun ka rritur eksportin, bizneset tona ka rritur eksportin i ashtë Kosovë dhe naturisht ndër fushat më dëzhvilluar ashtë fusha e teknologjis ku të rritë ta një në fokusuar të i mase në atë sektor. Qëfar mund të bëjmë ne të stimulojmë akoma më shumë që të zhvillohen sidomos eksporti dhe fushat e tjera në vendin tonë, të lasë gjithmonë për sektorin privatë? The good news is that Kosovo is fully digitalized. Every single village in Kosovo has access to the infrastructure, the digital infrastructure, um, and therefore that per se is an important piece of news to relay because that means that even those uh, young people that are living <coughs> away from the capital city can actually see uh, prospects for development where they live building on the uh, infrastructure, access to digital infrastructure. But access to digital infrastructure is not, is an important condition, but is not mm, sufficient per se. Uh, there needs to be an investment in digital skills, in skills in general and digital skills. That is very important. And um, I believe that um, there is already a refined thinking uh, in, the, in the authorities to actually uh, provide the, the youth with all the skills that they need to be able to prosper in Kosovo. Now, there are uh, important initiatives that have been launched. For example, there is, um, in Prism, there is a center called Kren that connects all the universities in, uh, um, in Kosovo and that basically increase, per se, the access to knowledge. But beyond that, they also provide very, uh, very much up to, up to standard um, trainings to young people that want, that see uh, a, a future in the, um, in the digital economy. So that is uh, another element. So infrastructure, skills is, is another one. And then access to opportunities. And access to opportunities means supporting them when they create startups, providing them with the seed money that is needed and providing them also with the expertise that they need to start and manage a business. Përmandet të rinjtë dhe rëndësia që ka për edukimin e tyre, shumë tri po e braktisin Kosovën. Pse po ndodhë kjo? Pikrish në këtë situatë kur egziston një krizë ekonomike globale. Migration has existed since uh, the human being has, uh, has appeared on the face of Earth, right? So it's something that, it's a phenomenon that uh, we will never be able to, uh, to stop because it's, it's part of human nature. E everybody, uh, everyone will, will look at opportunities and uh, opportunities that fit their, their own 
uh, life project and uh, you know, that, that would also allow them to have a better standard of living. So that said, uh, in, my, um, in my presence here, during my, my staying here in Kosovo, I also realized how proud uh, young people are of their country and how willing they are to make into difference uh, in this country. So they want to stay. And they are actually deciding to leave when they perceive, and it's an issue not of perception, but also perceive that they cannot stay. And that perception is based on how they see the reality of the country. We often talk about the availability of jobs and, and a salary, but this is part of the story. The other part of the story is the quality of the services that they can rely on. <clears throat> education, health, justice. Uh, so these are all things that contribute to molding that perception of whether or not someone will stay or will leave the country. So it's not just an issue of providing, creating jobs, which per se is the, uh, one of the basic foundations of, of um, uh, a policy that uh, looks at retaining human capital in the country. There needs to be an effort also to address all other issues that will that determine whether or not a person thinks that his or her future is here or in another country. Flasim pak por bashkëpunimin ekonomik rajonal. Kosova me Macedonin, Malinezi, Shqiprin dhe me vendet e tjera. Si e vlerësoni ju këtë bashkëpunim ekonomik rajonal? These are small economies very small economies and therefore uh, cooperating becomes essential. Becomes essential to uh, improve availability of resources, to maximize the availability of resources, but also to address jointly the constraints that small economies may face when, uh, when for example, accessing markets. Uh, so I believe that regional cooperation is uh, ongoing already but it could be further strengthened in areas that are key to every single country. Let's think about in the region, let's think about uh, energy. All these countries face constraints with uh, energy generation. Um, and uh, you have seen that this crisis has, has exposed the need of countries first to diversify their energy supply away from fossils, but at the same time to uh, do, do so in, um, with a pressing need of guaranteeing access to electricity uh, to everyone. How do you do that? Well, one of the reasons, uh, one of the actually answers to this, um, to this question is yes, investing in renewables, but is also uh, investing in making regional integration of the grids work, actually work. Kosovo and Albania have um, a treaty in place, have an agreement in place, and uh, that's actually uh, an important step forward. But more could be done. I mentioned energy, but there are some, some other areas where uh, regional integration is a must for this, these countries. It is a must in order to sustain their economic development, but also take them to the next level. And also, um, and also facilitate their integration as a bloc uh, with other regional blocs, and in this particular case, the European Union. Jemi në muaj në dytë të vitit të 2023, do shta është pak heret të dim se si do të zhvillohen rjedat ekonomike në vendin tonë. Me gjitha të jam kurioze të adin nga këndë vështrimi juaj, si e pres në ju zhvillimin ekonomik për këtë vetë? It's, uh, once again, as we were talking about inflation, it's, it's often difficult to come up with uh, estimates because what I say today may change tomorrow based on the evolution of the situation around Kosovo and uh, the evolution on markets, and when I say markets, real markets, financial markets, etc. What we are seeing is, uh, with the information that we have, we're seeing Kosovo still growing at its traditional growth rates, so between three and four percent. So that's something that, um, that, that we expect to continue. It's difficult to pinpoint a 
specific decimal after uh, the main number, but we see Kosovo continue growing, all things being equal. So if there is no additional shock, if there is no additional uh, stress posed on the economy, Kosovo should continue to grow and continue to grow at traditional level. But in order for Kosovo to create better jobs, better higher value jobs, it needs to, to grow at a higher uh, percentage. And that can only happen if uh, the issue of productivity is put at the forefront of, of every single effort by the public and the private sector. Uh, si vlerëson investimet e huaj, janë Kosovë interesimin e të huajve për të investuar këtu? Sa po kriojmë kushte ne për këtë? Foreign direct investment in this country uh, is, has traditionally been led by resources provided by the diaspora. So it has actually translated into constructions. There are, of course, that's not that's part of the story. There are also other uh, foreign direct investments that have um, have targeted Kosovo uh, in other sectors. But these are the sectors actually that will make the difference in taking Kosovo to a higher uh, level of growth. And these are these are actually the investments that we would want to see increase and improve. But the conditions need to be uh, there for private investors to come and invest in the country. And these are, this, this speaks to human capital and availability of skills, uh, speaks to the certainty of predictability of um, uh, rules and norms. It, it talks to the transparency of um, and, uh, and anti-corruption efforts. And there, I'm glad to see that Kosovo has made quite some progress in the, in the past years. Um, it speaks also to the uh, ability to access finance and also to then export. And there, um, the, the ability to export depends also on uh, transport, connectivity, and also ability of the country to export to countries that are farther away and um, they're not necessarily on Kosovo's uh, radar screen for the time being. Kosova po shënam 15 vjet të shtetë. Cili do t'i shte mesajji juaj për vite të ardhshme dhe zhvillimin ekonomik të vendit ton? Kosovo can grow, it can grow much more uh, if the country invests on its people, if the country invests on creating the conditions for the private sector to create more jobs, better jobs, if the country invest, continue investing and increases invest public investments that have remained some subdued for a while. That's, those are all powerful engines of growth and the engine here can be taken at a different speed quite quickly. My pleasure. Thank you. Alessandr Biancardi is a vanda zritua si bashkimit evropian në Kosovë për start-up, tha që zhvillimi ekonomik i Kosovë e si jo vetëm në 15 vjetë, por edhe në 20-25 vjetët e fundit, ka qenë mjafti mirë. Si pas ti, ka ngritje të vazhdueshme të kapitalit e Kosovës, që në 25 vjetët e fundit është rritur 10 fish më shumë. Duk e folur për të ardhme në vandit tonë, aspektin e zhvillimit ekonomik, zë vanda zritua si bashkimit evropian në Kosovë, tha se është shumë i knaqur me procese që po zhvillohen. Dhe se bashkimi evropian është shumë i prirur që të jetë bashk me Kosovën për të arritur zhvillim të qëndrueshem ekonomik. Well, I have to say that uh, economic development uh, uh, of Kosovo in the last, uh, actually, not only 15 years, but also 20, 25 years has been quite remarkable. Uh, we have seen, for example, per capita income uh, increasing since the last 25 years, increasing up to tenfold, and this is a remarkable achievement. Uh, obviously, the, let's say the average uh, income is not yet comparable to the one of other EU uh, countries, it's still considerably low, but let's say the, the, the way if, uh, is paved. Um, to be said also that the economic uh, development of Kosovo has been also benefited, first of all, from its position. 
being obviously very close to other European uh, and, and other markets. So this is also a big uh, advantage of, of Kosovo. Uh, there has been uh, in, the, in the last year uh, uh, an increase of openness for trade to other countries. This was very uh, important as well together with um, infrastructure and non-infrastructure, uh, let's say, reform. For example, uh, of course, infrastructure has been built, uh, road uh, <clears throat> buildings and all other necessary infrastructure in order to facilitate economic de development. Um, they started with Kosovo, started the digitalization of the, of the economy, which is uh, obviously ongoing, but is going, uh, let's say, uh, fairly well. Also in terms of uh, education, uh, Kosovo is getting more and more in line with, uh, which, uh, with what are the, let's say, the requirement uh, of the market. Um, but of course, uh, uh, let's say, uh, the challenge is still quite a lot. Uh, I have to say that from a European Union perspective, uh, since uh, 2016, uh, uh, Kosovo benefit of this new, uh, let's say, agreement with the, with the EU, the Stabilization and Association uh, Agreement, which basically uh, open up Kosovo to the 5 million, 500 million uh, customers, European customers. So this also, uh, it's an important uh, step forward for, for the economy of, uh, of Kosovo. Another important element, because we don't have to forget that uh, when we talk about economic development, we also have to uh, think uh, about its sustainability. So it is sustainable economic development. So another important element that um, uh, helped Kosovo in the last years to, uh, to, to, to achieve or to go towards sustainability is also the process of a green transition. So not only uh, thinking about the trading, but also thinking about how to make Kosovo more sustainable. So how to manage natural resources in a more sustainable uh, way. Uh, so this is element that uh, from, uh, from my perspective, uh, from the EU perspective, are giving a strong signal that Kosovo is really on a, on a good path. Um, if I may uh, uh, mention or describe a bit also which are the challenges, because obviously there are challenges ahead for the economic uh, development of Kosovo. Um, um, one that uh, nowadays uh, we see as a, as a clear challenge is the energy crisis, of course. Um, another crisis, of course, is related, it was related to the, the, the pandemic, to the COVID-19, to the war in Ukraine. Uh, and so all this uh, uh, crisis basically uh, somehow had an impact on the economic development of uh, Kosovo. So an important challenge for Kosovo is to make its economy more resilient, more adaptable and resilient to this type of uh, global uh, crisis. Uh, uh, what were the obstacles to Kosovo economics development during uh, this period? Yeah, I mean, as, or, um, as already mentioned, let's say, um, despite the fact that Kosovo in a, in a very, uh, let's say, uh, positive traject uh, trajectory towards uh, uh, sustainable economic uh, development, there are still some uh, well, considerable challenges that have to be addressed. Uh, we have uh, still a quite substantial unemployment rate, especially affecting the youth, the younger, um, we still have a, a kind of disparity, a gap between uh, uh, male and female employment. Uh, women are not yet uh, uh, at the same level, let's say, of employment of, uh, of men. And also the educational sectors, despite uh, progresses, uh, still need to be more aligned with the market uh, requirements. Um, Businesses still are still suffering from maybe lack of access to some financial resources to survive, so they are not yet able to withstand uh, crisis. Uh, there are small, uh, small size micro uh, SMEs, micro enterprises, so they need to be supported uh, with uh, access to, to, to finances. And, uh, <clears throat> and of course, infrastructure still needs to be improved. Okay, uh, particular digitalization of the economy still needs to be to be improved. Digitalization also of the educational sector, 
So there are all these type of uh, challenges, challenges to which actually the European Union is, uh, is, uh, is, is trying to, to help, uh, is trying to help Kosovo since the last, uh, uh, basically since 99 basically, uh, is providing uh, Kosovo with uh, assistance. Let's also not forget that the European Union is the main trading partner of, uh, of Kosovo. And also in terms of financial assistance is uh, the main donors, as you want to say, it, of, uh, of Kosovo. And uh, we are providing uh, resources, funding. Uh, I give you just some figures since 2007 until now. Uh, we provided uh, through what is called uh, the IPA, so this instrument of pre-accession assistance, we provided Kosovo with almost 1.5 billion euros. And uh, we assisted Kosovo basically tackling all the challenges that he had in terms of economic development, social development, environmental issues. Um, and so basically we are keep on working together with, uh, with Kosovo at different level. We are working with the central governments but we are working also with the local government, with the municipalities, as well with the uh, civil society to try to tackle this challenge. Uh, how do you see the de uh, development of the private sector in Kosovo? Mm. Uh, yes, uh, as I am mentioned briefly before, um, so um, mainly the, the, the private sector in Kosovo is made of uh, small and micro businesses. So these businesses, which actually are, um, how to say, also in the EU, they are quite of a backbone of the, of the economy because they are dynamic, they are innovative, but of course uh, you have to nourish them. You have to nurture them, you have to uh, assist them. And, uh, and so there is still a lot to be done in this, re in this respect. There is definitely a need for, uh, um, how to say, um, business differentiation, okay? So try basically to differentiate the products that uh, the private sectors can offer in terms of not only on goods, but in terms of services. Um, so in, in this respect, I see a vibrant uh, community, business community, but still needs to be uh, supported. And that is also part of the support of the European Union, is, uh, is providing also to uh, micro, small and medium enterprises. For example, just to mention uh, one recent uh, important uh, step, we, we, we provided uh, an important, uh, um, let's say, package of assistance to the government of Kosovo to tackle the energy crisis. Uh, part of the, of the funding allocated to this support will also help uh, to fund, to give grants uh, to micro as, uh, and uh, small SMEs in order to improve the energy efficiency of their production. Uh, and this will help actually to, to improve their productivity. Uh, from the EU's perspective, how do you see the future economic development of Kosovo? Um, as I said, uh, the challenges are a lot. On the other hand, uh, I see that uh, Kosovo is, um, is aligned with, uh, or is getting more and more aligned with the European uh, policies, with the European standards. Um, so I'm actually, I'm, I'm, I'm very glad on, on how the, uh, the, the process is, is ongoing. Um, it's difficult. I, I don't deny that it's difficult, and, but the EU, the European Union, is obviously very keen to, uh, to, uh, to work together with Kosovo hand in hand uh, to bring it to a more uh, sustainable economic development, which is more and more aligned with, uh, with the European Union. So, I, I honest, from a personal perspective, I see a bright future, difficult, but definitely a future that we will work together with, uh, with Kosovo. With the European Union, we work together with Kosovo. Këto ishim vlerësimet e dy zyrtarve ndërkomtarë për zhvillimin ekonomik gjatë 15 vjetëve të pavarësis e Kosovës. Falemenderit që nga shikuat, miru takofshim. Muzika